of profit. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Are you here on Deep Investigation? Are you going to be uh, on our show? What no, I was, I was just doing a quick hello and uh, I'll let you guys get to it. But good to see you, Shambu. It's really good to see you. You look great, looking great. <laughs> well, you know, nothing screams authority like a collared pink shirt. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> uh, enjoy you too. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to actually being able to see you in person when all of this craziness calms down. Yes. Come out here. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> hello, Mr. Shambu. Well, hello. hello. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, what we, a joy. we have been uh, graced with the presence of Miss Plum. Yeah, that was a cameo. Did you get that on the recording? Yep, I got that. I got that. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Uh, yeah, I feel flushed with, um, you know, the excitement that someone gets, say, when um, Mork uh, from Mork and Mindy went on to the Fawns, uh, you know, on to happy days and suddenly wow worlds are colliding and all the hits are coming together uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh god you know like i mean for our generation there are these tv moments right that are everyone saw everyone experienced and everyone knows what you're talking about but to other generations they have no idea what you're talking actually about. that is very true i may actually be very much dating myself but uh you know to uh, the hipsters who are driving around in um you know an old f100s and uh you know they should do themselves a favor and go and see Mork and Mindy, because it's uh, it's about an alien uh, on the West Coast, and there couldn't be a better uh, combination of experiences. You know, I've always felt a strong association with Robin Williams and Mork. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, I can see that. I just don't have his sense of humor. I mean, I wish if, if, if I'd had it, I think I would have done better, but. You know, I don't think I'd be surprised if I saw you sleeping upside down with your head down on an armchair. You know, that just wouldn't be surprising to me. <laughs> it looks like the Sultan's tent behind you. This is lovely. Well, I, I was giving, a, I'm starting to do, I don't know if you've noticed my messages of the day. And it, it's, I'm basically starting to sort of transmit kind of what I've learned and uh, without any type of uh, worry about if there's an audience or not. I've learned to sort of speak to nobody <laughs> into the camera, imagining that one day there may be someone, but for the most part, it doesn't matter, you know? This is, this is I think, luminous, surely. <laughs> Effulgent, I think is the word. Because <laughs> don't you find that, you know, it's so like if you're about to talk to somebody, everything's about like who you are talking to. Like you're not just communicating to the world in a sense of I have a message and I'm going to say this to everybody. We, we tend to sort of talk to people or groups. And so our communication patterns are very specific to that. But we, a lot of people may not know, like if, if you were given the opportunity to speak to the species and you had them all in front of you and again, just in the imagination, but what would you say? And so humans, we can imagine that you can say, okay, well, if I was going to speak to the species, I would just do this. And so, and so now because of zoom and backgrounds and everyone can do it like, right? Like the, there's there's anyone <laughs> can think it and they had the chance to i mean in my case of course there may be 10 people who actually watch it but <laughs> it's it's like the intention is you're not speaking to yogi shampoo i'm not speaking miss plum i'm not speaking i'm i'm actually speaking to the whole species and i i suggest that to you because it changes it, it really changes how you frame it because usually we're talking to an audience right? Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. And such a, a spiritual practice, actually, yeah. is, is your ability to um, project 
to declare what is the truest in you, you know, and what is the most essential and actually have that coming out as the predominant message. And, and if we all did that, wow, it would really be very rectifying. You know, you would know exactly what are people standing for? What are people truly living for? Huh. And, and this is definitely a time when we are being called to stand at that level of honesty, that level of authenticity, that level of blatancy. Um, yeah. Well, I want to get back to that rectification. Like, what? Well, well, ah, yes. What's, what's, what are you rectifying? Like, rec, rectum? Rec, rec, what do yeah. You yeah, well, you know, wrecked them, um, <laughs> killed them, I, I think is what they said, um, <laughs> is that uh, politics damn near kills us. Uh, you know, we are always cautioning, we're always trying to leverage what is and anticipating what is going to be the most um, acceptable um, answer. And we've talked a lot about this over the last couple of weeks of how do we manage our friendships when we are actually at odds with people intellectually at that time, with whatever working hypothesis we are coming from. Um, and so to be able to be more blatant, at least then we could actually see what is going on, see where someone is at and meet them in honesty and not just with how do I massage my comfort around this person for, for the next, you know, 20 minutes. And then when they leave, I'll like, God, I don't know if I can be friends with that person. That person believes that <laughs> at least you can make the decision in real time. <laughs> you see that JP Sears uh, video I sent to you. I did. Yes. Isn't that guy genius? He really is. Yeah. Another redhead, you know, so like, I, really... I, I just see you and him as brothers. I see you and him as, I think you could do something not similar, you know, your own kind of brand, but I, I just think he's, he's he, he, his niche <sighs> is, is, is like the people I hang with. Like, I mean, everything he is saying, either I do or I see other people do. And it's, it's, it's just like this magnifying glass that goes like this. <laughs> well, I really knew that, I, that my friends were deep down the rabbit hole when I had a friend on Zoom the other week uh, and they were wearing basically a well-fashioned tinfoil hat uh, in as much as it was an, a, a, uh, a RF blocking toque. <laughs> that's made out of this special material. They actually have a RF uh, counter. And so they put it in the toque and realize, my God, it actually does really cut down the frequencies. But, uh, but I'm like, this is what everybody's making fun of us for. I know. But, you know we're actually, it's, be, it's come a time when it's become necessary. If you don't want it in your head to wear the tinfoil hat, we're at the point of conspiracy. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, uh, you're, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, I might just be a commentator <laughs> on the conspiracy that is unfolding in real time here. <laughs> How many facts? I have 50 scientists ready, and I can let you know all the facts around why my tinfoil hat is necessary. <laughs> I, I think if we were doing, let's say, a news channel, and let's say we're just like the news as opposed to so it's blaring and obvious that we just say, what is the funniest thing on the planet today? And this is what happened today. A police officer came into the Dunkin' Donuts uh, parking lot. Someone was sitting and drinking a coffee and he came up and gave them a ticket because he could be a bad influence on any teens that could come there and might... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you just had a news channel that was just going to all of the ridiculously stupid things that are occurring and then go to the rest of the humans. And here's another one. Watch this one. <laughs> and all we do is laugh at the stupidity of it. And then that police officer one day kind of, you know, hey, Bob, I think you should check this out. There's like 500,000 humans laughing at you right now. <laughs> 
I saw, you know, and respect to all good police officers and stuff, but I saw a, um, I was in my hometown, Hamilton, Ontario, and uh, I was at a red light. A cop turned on their lights, their siren, went through that red light, went through a second and then a third red light, turned right. I drove through those lights and then looked over. It's a Tim Hortons do donuts. He was, you know, burning through those red lights actually to get to the donut shop. I no. thought that's the most perfect no. typical story. Now I have the story I can justify. Yeah. Well, I mean, the prejudice. to tell you the truth, if I was a police officer, I think I would just, I, I'd come behind people and turn on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> just brick them up and then run away. I'd put on sirens outside of people's doors. I would just do things to fuck people up. Well, it's a good thing to keep people on their toes. Yeah. I'm assuming that that's actually a part of the, the job, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep ourselves with, and that, and that, that's again why I have a collar shirt on now is because I'm really trying to up my game. It starts with the collar and moves upward. Well, shouldn't, shouldn't you, um, cause I, I, I'm putting this, I'm sort of trying to hide these little things I'm seeing on my neck. Right. Like, I mean, you, <laughs> like, are you, wait, I had a question for you. Cause I know we haven't even started yet, but, um, <laughs> you were looking and, and seeing some of our, our videos, you were doing your assessment of, ah, yes. Of, of if our shows are worthy of you placing on your own Facebook page, and we've done what seven, eight, nine of them yet. <laughs> so we, we, yeah. we haven't quite reached that place of of security in you for your comfort zone to be uh, mollified. I'm now very that you excited about this one, Moving well, forward, I'm so excited. Let's not look at this one because I'm sure oh, this okay. doesn't match it. But tell me your assessment. What did, what did you think? I um, I think that we we have a fantastic presence on camera. I, I actually really find you very engaging. Your voice is fantastic for media. I just want to say that. And in fact, um, yeah, I find this very very entertaining. I I sometimes feel he hesitant because of um, <clears throat> just little glitches in reciting, um, you know, facts, ideas, you know, and that's why I'm trying to get a bit broader with my, you know, kind of uh, recounting of what I've learned, the impressions I have for the week and, and be less, because the show was kind of- Be less what? You got to finish that sentence. Be I less- emphatic I, I guess like with the inside scoop you know you expect it to be investigative reporting right, right. yeah like we're we're super in there with all of the facts and figures and and where i think um there's let yes we are working out our mind we're working out our facts the inside scoop inside <laughs> of the aerial arts you know circus art so important that actually works a lot better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have ourselves. So yeah, so all that to say, I really love, um, I really love these discussions. I'm getting a lot out of these discussions. I'm getting a lot from being able to recap my week, exactly what is the world that I'm living in and how have I been getting through it and what has been actually making me um, stutter inside of myself as well and so th this has been very therapeutic really fantastic um do i feel comfortable showing it to the general public no just not just the general public but you're act the people who actually know you like facebook <laughs> you know it's a bit of like swimming in a pool of piranhas. You don't really know who is going to leave you alone and who's going to, you know, yeah. It's just the kind of, there's so much cognitive dissonance going back and forth right now. I hesitate to actually 
uh, go in there. I usually go in there with either a bit of humor and some yogic practices to calm everyone's mind down from the conversations, not add to the conversation. <laughs> so, so, yeah. But wait, I mean, isn't this like, We've been discussing, let's say, this pandemic and 5G and all these, let's say, conspiracy theories and trying, let's say, to bring attention to people about what's going on. But there's also, of course, because I'm a wizard and you're a yogi, we, we, we want to bring in the self-knowledge or self-understanding part of this and, and to hopefully be examples for other people to do the same thing we're doing in that we want to influence our networks and people about what we think is occurring. And so, you know, for us, let, let's say, because I've noticed because I've worked in the media with people and I've done lots of filming and I find that there's a place or a stage in someone's life where you're not ready yet to show your videos or you to the people that actually know you uh. because you don't feel they may support you or you don't feel that they're going to believe in you or you may think that, I'm going to lose them if they actually know how I think mm. or, or, or they know that I'm hanging with this guy. <laughs> they're, they're, they're going to have a different assessment of me. And I have this certain image that I like that they see of me. And I don't want to put that under scrutiny because I'm not ready yet, or I don't think I'm good enough yet. And that's my, I guess, whether a challenge or my, my question to you, because, I mean, obviously, I've sort of lost that. But I've also, I don't really have an audience, right? I might have lost that. I may say, I don't care how people see me, but it doesn't matter because nobody's watching me. You know, if I had 200,000 people actually watching me, I might be a little bit different. But I think my confidence comes because I'm pretty sure that there are 10 or 20 people and they don't even comment or share or like. So it, I could just talk about anything. It doesn't matter. Nobody's coming back at me. But at some point, mm. I, I know that the whole world is going to start to look at us and go, what the fuck are those guys doing? Like, what, that guy won't shut up. Like, I keep seeing his face on my Facebook. I never watch him because uh, something about it. But if they ever actually watch and go, do you know what those guys are actually doing? Like, they're, they're, they are like the world leaders in transforming the species. You know, I think Western Canada, you know, we're, we're like a, there's a whole bunch of us here and we're very different from those guys below. Mm. You know, we're not trying to blow people up or take things over. We're actually, we want to, let's, let's make things better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we're not politicians or credible. We don't have all these accolades, but we know in our hearts that we hold knowledge that is a very high end compared to what we're seeing out there. So I put that back to you after that big context building. Thank you so much. You know, I really, I, I accept the challenge of uh, at least generating a show that I feel is concise uh, enough or, or is um, pithy enough that, uh, you, that people could chew on it. You know, I think my challenge has been to make it contemporary enough in as much as um, relevant to what's happening right now. I know I'm very confident in my realm of, of inner development and management. And, um, you know, so with that, boom, I could be, yeah, I could go on Dr. Oz and feel fantastic. You know, um, <laughs> in fact, I think I got this shirt from Dr. From Dr. Oz. Um, yeah, so, but, it, and so it's putting it all together and then feeling like, yeah, I, we got this. This feels awesome. Yeah. So I'm so close, man. <laughs> Sweep. I'm, I'm super close. I feel really, really good about it. So, I, so what you're saying is after watching them all, you're still not at the point of posting them on your Facebook page. I would love to actually edit and 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 do little ten minute snippets. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I but, have ADD, you know. It's very difficult for me to imagine people sitting down and watching something for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> you know that I'm I'm doing like ten of these a week, 
I, I, I'm doing. You I, are rocking this. Yeah. No, but, yeah. but imagine you thinking no one can watch you for an hour. Imagine me, someone watching ten hours a week of me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? There are. There are people in their house with 25 cats watching you for 10 hours a week. I know that. Yeah. No, I know they're not. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to be a guest show on one of your other shows because I'm kind of getting FOMO. Those, those look like fantastic shows. There's a lot going on. I got some interesting people. I mean, I mean to me, again, everyone I'm talking to, is holding a huge piece is like a world teacher and i'm just kind of saying okay you guys got to listen to mr yogi shambu because he's got the goods and so we'll 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 do this thing between us that's kind of funny and uh then at some point he's gonna <laughs> the people go well we kind of like the show but we like that guy <laughs> so you, you'll take all your followers over there and and they'll they'll go watch your health and yogi stuff and and the few that remain with me <laughs> who who believe in the global takeover yes the guardians the very secret plan they may follow other places but uh most are going to go you know like we, we just don't quite believe that guy but, but we, we we like this guy when people are ready to take action and take action on changing the environment around them directly, boldly, then I believe Plant Planetary Guardians is for them. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For yeah. Sure. Hey, did you know that, like, I mean, I've, I think I've told you a couple of times that I see you as the Victoria commander for Planetary Guardians. Oh, well, thank you so much. Like, have well, you ever, you. did you, I've said it to you twice and I, I don't think it quite registered. Do you, do you kind of get that that's where you're at or? I, I believe that I have um, a certain um, presence. Uh, I also have a certain uh, uh, network of people. I think one of my greatest strengths is actually being able to um, really share these are difficult shirts, eh? You wonder why people are so upset at the office because they're wearing these shirts. Um, yeah. Um, I have a presence for sure. I have a network of people. I really know so many movers and shakers, exceptional people. And so that is a power of mine, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's, that's... To be able to motivate people into... Uh, a role outside of their immediate needs is has proven to be one, one of the most challenging things for me i was uh you know i was really involved with the salmon fight with you and to be able to motivate people to be able to do things at times i found it just easier for me to do all the work myself uh or you know with a, a very small group of people because of that yeah so hail to the commanders that are able to motivate the masses. Yeah. And well, and, and I guess what I'm saying is, or what I see is like in part of the very secret plan is like, there's 144,000 planetary guardians all around the world. And it could be like just one in each city, right? There's a lot of cities. And so that planetary commander then is behind creating a shared knowledge community of 144 people. So if we get 144 communities each, I don't know, a thousand communities, each with 144 people, that that reaches the goal of 144,000. Mm -hmm. And so essentially, if you want to build an infrastructure, you have to create a, a sort of a command hierarchy within it. And then what happens is, is because we're creating it ourselves, or I'm creating it, or we're creating it, whatever, is, is we're creating a, a hierarchy of organization where Right now, you're just one person, but in two years, there may be 20,000 planetary guardians in Victoria. And Wait, are you selling me on your pyramid scheme? <laughs> and, and all I can think about right now is the fact that I have to itch my nose. And in the age of COVID, how do you itch your nose? I'm on camera right now. I can't itch my nose. So what am I going to use, a pen? And then like sterilize the pen 
like what what do i do you know so do i do this because you rarely you know touch that part of your arm you realize this in the movie this is the point when the the wizard is putting the knight on the on the king or the the, the knights and and it, it's it's beautiful that you you can meet that moment with with the realization that there's something on your nose because planetary guardians of course has to be a, a humor channel where <laughs> it isn't quite going as captain sweet thinks i think if you got everyone doing what you wanted i'm not sure yeah would captain sweep just cease to exist you know well, at that time i don't know i mean think about it i mean i'm i get to go around the world and find people who are brilliant and beautiful who've never really had the power to implement what is in their heart to do good things right you always got to go to the the old paradigm hierarchy is in charge and so they control everything so if, we, if we're creating a whole new system we, we don't gotta ask them frick them <laughs> you know we're creating a whole new hierarchy and because of software and the internet it can be done. I mean, everyone's doing it right now. Like there's groups meeting all across the world and everyone's formulating plans and everyone, you know, there's a, there's billions of us and hundreds of thousands of them. Yes. And, yes. and they're, they're doing is they they just got to make sure that those billions don't go like organize and go, uh, let's get rid of these guys uh, and self-organize. Uh, and so it's, it's within the belief systems of humans who go, well, wait, should we just go along with this old system that seems to be the way it's working or actually create a whole new system and fuck them, you know? So I think as, as more and more humans get that we can create our future together without them and sort of build our own infrastructure, which as you know, I've spent 25 years designing, you know, now because of the, now I just see the plan unfolding. It's it's done deal. It's like we got this. Like they can't stop. Like there's no way they can stop what's about to happen because so much time and effort into like the divine plan is going, and and our species is evolving. We're going through a transformation, and the ones that know it, you know, they're just kind of like in the party zone going waiting for the others they're the butterflies who are hey man you guys are pupae but you're about to fly man you're you can fly and the pupae are like what the fuck is he talking about <laughs> <laughs> so you're like this you know you're this butterfly in victoria and you're looking down and you're going okay there's all these pupae down there but oh there's one there's one there's one and all they got to do is kind of see you and it's you know the butterflies all those monarch butterflies you can fly together and so you're this bright light in Victoria, and I'm kind of like this wizard who's going, okay, he's the bright light in Victoria, like, you know. And everyone's going, yeah, yeah, we like that. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're good. And so we'll go to Victoria and we'll get things going, have a nice big party and have a nice big workshop and get all these people excited. And then I move on and go to the next town because I'm 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 the catalyst to start these things. And then you're left to do all the work, right? Great. No, no, yeah, that's really good. I, I'm just starting to feel like my life actually has a balance to it. Um, <laughs> and so it'd be great to add some more things to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's been on your mind this week? Uh, well, other than... Um, what's been the I mean, zeitgeist of the moment? Well, okay, because I guess I usually... We should be talking about the political things. I guess my, I mean, in my own work, I reached a point with a team where I was teaching the conversation types and I was, I was doing the synergy conversations of clearing and healing and grieving and conflict resolution, synergizing, synchronization, uh, appreciation and connecting. So eight synergy conversations and I'm teaching this group of four people and they've never seen anything like this. And I've got cards for each one of them. I send them the cards and then, we're, and I'm describing each card and I'm talking about the clearing conversation. And, and, you know, it's just like Shambu comes into my nice little pad here. And he sits down, puts his feet up on my 
favorite thing. And he's and inside I'm irritated. I'm going, Shambu, I got clear with you. <laughs> and you, you go, well, what's up, man? And I go, I don't like when you put your feet up on my thing. <laughs> Now that could lead into conflict or could lead into nothing if we both know it's a clearing and you may go, you know, Elijah, I don't really like the way you're always talking about the bad guys and how they're trying to attack us. And my, my people don't like that. So, you know, I don't want you to do that. And you think I may get offended. And you think if you bring it up, I'm not going to take it well. And so I'm going to get more angry. And so you're afraid. So there's these little things that happen between humans that we never communicate that if we just understood that we can clear it, that it can get good. Because things get bad because we're not clearing these things. And I'm sure you with your girlfriend and all your other friends, um, that you have to go through these times where you have to hear the feedback and adjust to your preferences. And you state what it is and they know and then things get better. But if if there's something they're, they're doing that's irritating you or something you're doing that's irritating you. And, and that's what happens in relationships over time. You either put up with it or you say something. And if you say something, it can get worse because then they're going to start talking about all the things that they're bugging them. <laughs> and so you either have an honest relationship or you don't, you either, you know, communicate actually what's occurring or a lot of times what we just hide it, put up with it and just kind of go through life. But inside we're, and then over time, you're, right because you never actually clear the resentments that pile up and so here it is a little card stating this you know with appreciation and healing and so i went through each card and, and, and told them what each was and, and it was just like kind of like light bulbs they'd never heard of this before they didn't know that conversation types structure the information flow. They didn't know there are types of conversations that you can actually bring up to someone and say, I would like to have this clearing. I would like to have this healing or whatever it is. Wow. That clarity and distinction. So much capacity lays inside of us, but it's reliant on a, a clear understanding of what mode you are in. And then you can rise to that mode uh, because what you've delineated are all the universal modes uh, that people function within. Brilliant. And so timely right now. You know, this week has been a lot uh, uh, in my life around me, the people around me. It's, it has been around those, uh, those types of clearing conversations and then moving into the healing and the grieving and all of that. It really, it's, uh, it is scary. But it's a lot less scary when you know that A, everyone has to have these types of conversations. They are inevitable part of life. And B, there's a good chance life will get better. And C, you'll actually have a bigger relationship, a bigger bubble to live in if you actually clear out that space again. Because you won't be either frightened and recoiling away or you won't be squeezed by this tension that ensues. My teacher says that every time that you are dishonest with someone, you reinforce this idea of me against the world, where every time that you are honest, then it can be actually, you know, I can be in harmony within the world and it's me and the world. And so I really applaud you. And it's fascinating, isn't it, that we can keep introducing these basic universal foundational principles and you still have people going, really? I had no idea that that was going on. And yeah. that is incredible. And so I, I find that super exciting is also that going back to the basics and having the patience to continually sharing with people these principles, these foundational principles, there's still so much work to be done just introducing people to the principles of uh, conversation, the principles of action. Mm. And so that's fantastic. Yeah. I hope you sold those cards to them at 30 bucks a pop at least. Yeah. No, I just uh, sent it along as a gift. And that's the thing. It's, it's like there's a, when you have knowledge, if you have something in a PDF form, you know, if I send it to you, it, it doesn't take it. Hey, I, I sent you some maps, right? 
Uh, yes, yes, you did. Have you printed them yet? Probably not. Uh, no, no, but I did look at them and I would love more maps. I would love to look through your catalog of maps so that I can actually order maps yeah. and um, pay you for those maps because oh, wow. I'm really looking for, and I think that, that there's a great need for divination maps. Yeah, he is actually gonna leave camera to write that down. That's how important that information was to him. That, that, that's fantastic. Oh, we're actually getting, oh, beautiful. Well, that's, that's what I sent you. Wow. And I think this, this is the one that, and you know what I did? I made a video, my first kind of video of attempting to teach the map, attempting to like break it down. And I spent like a half hour with it. And I was like kind of swearing and making funny faces and being, being kind of like, whether it's Captain Sweep or character or just like not trying to be some sort of dry person. Um, so um, oh, if that's the prime minister, please get it. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, looking for a dowsing map. I'm busy. <laughs> Should yeah. I keep the shutdown happening? Should I not keep the shutdown happening? What, what's happening? <laughs> so, so this one, it has spiritual master, awakened being, awakening being, asleep, mind control zombie, and dark lord. <laughs> so this is one of six, right? And so the next one here is... Uh, Members, allies, customers, competitors, opponents, and enemies. So you use your pendulum and you go, okay, well, who is this person? Like ahead of time or in the middle and, and, and you, you're, you're going to be, you'll go somewhere. And I was doing this with Miss Plum and she was assessing somebody. And it was the first time I saw someone using one of my maps with a pendulum that wasn't me. Cause I, you know, I make the maps, I use them myself. I sort of show it with someone. And then if, if, if there isn't some huge response to uh, people wanting them, I just, okay, well, I guess they're not that interested. So I just keep them to myself, right? But I know that these are good maps. Like you take that pendulum and it's fascinating to see what comes up, right? Yeah, if people aren't familiar uh, with pendulums and dowsing, I think it's important just to give a, a sense of what it's all about. Um, both of us actually, myself included, I use pendulums in my own intuitive work, my own healing work. Um, it, a pendulum is based on the, uh, well, it's like the divining of water. You, that's another example of divining. And so it's, it's a divination tool that relies on the autonomic nervous system within our body to uh, give us feedback on, 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 sit, on situations so that in a sense, our super conscious mind, our uh, subconscious has a way of communicating with us through our physiology, through the automatic uh, moving of a pendulum, and so it's either the count, you know, the uh, uh, it's either clockwise or counterclockwise for the way that I do it. It's either a no is the counterclockwise, and the yes is the clockwise. For other people, it is going this way or this way, yeah. or stopping right in the middle. Yeah. And so, I my myself. For the last, well, well, yeah, like 35 years, I've been around people doing this. Some people incredibly um, effective at, um, they have been able to assess uh, different circumstances and illnesses, and it's been very helpful. And in some very critical times, I've seen people be dead wrong. And in fact, proven medically wrong with what they were divinating. Yeah. And so I think that that it's important to put that out there. To that that this is for to gain um, a conversation within yourself, and it's not to be seen as you know, do or die. This is you know the end all truth because I've seen some of the best in the world that I've ever been exposed to be dead wrong about yeah. some things. So um, it. It is a 
it's an intuitive art form uh, that also has some fascinating underpinnings with uh, some uh, scientific basis. So yeah, that's my assessment. Is there anything that you want to say about them? Well, I think in what's that book, Power Versus Force, mm -hmm. where, um, is it John Dawkins or David Dawkins? I think somebody, Hawkins, John Hawkins, maybe? He wrote this book. And I mean, what he was doing was muscle testing. Uh, yes. And he was saying that you can get a yes, no response with the body. So if, if a vegetable, let's say, is good for you, and you um, say, you know, this is yes, and this is no, that, mm. that, there's a, a break in the circuit when there's a no and it holds firm when there's a yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's another methodology of, of sort of divination in a sense, like kind of like the pendulum, mm -hmm. but it's more based upon the questions that you ask and then you get an answer. Mm -hmm. and, and then he devised that scale of consciousness from zero to a thousand where 200 and below is fear-based. Then as you go up, you get more and more towards love and enlightenment. And so that to me is, I mean, within the inflow, you can put that at the center point, at timelessness, and there is your levels of consciousness. So if you want to look at what is occurring, he's saying it has a vibration and that you can discern or assess what that vibration is through muscle testing. And so yeah, you probably know Charles Holmes, you know, and he's, he, he's the person who's done it the most with, from my point of view, and he's you know, he built companies upon it. He formulated foods with it. I mean, I, th I think he, he took it to a level of genius, but, but there are, as you said, you know, it doesn't always work and we can be off. And, you know, sometimes our direct intuition or knowing is more effective than relying on some sort of divination method. But I think when you have something like, like this and you're using the pendulum to sort of make a choice, it's almost like throwing the dice in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just, you throw the dice, it's a bit random, but you have to make a choice and maybe you don't want to sort of go with your mind and you're just going, well, just show me something. And if you get yourself out of the way and you use a pendulum, sometimes it shows you something that is, is very unique and very uh, special to whatever is the intention or question that you ask. So I find, you know, divination methods are, are a huge part of my life in terms of figuring out things because there's a thousand choices in front of you. All of them could be good, you know, and sometimes you don't, you don't know with your regular conscious thinking. So you go, okay, well just tell me. And the pendulum points the way and you, and you follow it. And a lot of the time it ends up very good. So in this, what this map does is it assesses. So to me, look, looking at, let's say, what we're talking about because the essence of our show we haven't even got to yet in a sense and that's kind of like the relationship between the pandemic or what's happening right now on the planet and the 5g rollout and what's the connection and to me there's the the whole thing about let's say these dark lords is you know do they exist you know like is there a design behind these sort of fabricated events that are happening or events that are happening that have come from some kind of design that are linked to a larger plan that isn't good for the species, but good for a small group of people. And so I think one of the big disconnections you probably see with people that you know are people that know this is occurring or people who don't believe it's occurring. Mm -hmm. and, and so what they're doing is, is there's this huge kind of battle for the minds of the people because if they can convince people that they're not there then that's their best defense right mm. you're never going to address the real cause it's like something is occurring like there's a village and a fire keeps starting and people are going it just happens naturally it's when the sun hits the straw there's a fire but one person is going it's that guy who comes in every week and he's got these matches and he sets fire to the freaking village and no one believes me. Go, no, 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 it's the sun. Because the guy who sets the fire comes in during the day and goes, hey, did you know that the sun makes the fire? And did you know this? And creates this story about the reason why something's occurring. And if you can get enough people to believe a big lie, like little lies, but big lies people seem to fall for because it's too big to even imagine. 9-11, how could, 
how can somebody do that, right? We'll just lie about it everywhere, all the time, until everyone believes us. <laughs> it, um, it's boiling down to me um, is embracing your intuitive awareness. It, it's actually um, strengthening those weaker parts of ourselves and to recognize that intellectualization is not the it's not the only source of information that we have available to us. And my hope is proportional representation that all parts of us can actually speak in concert. They can actually speak together um, and all be honored and all be utilized when we're making our decisions, when we're formulating our worldview. And so, um, this, I believe, this dowsing and these maps really enable us to spend the time strengthening, training, getting to know the options of what is out there as well. And that's the other great thing about the maps that I find is that, wait, I never even knew that that was an option to actually assess, you know, when I am talking, how high is my vibration right now? And so then... I can get a, a kinesthetic feeling and then, then I can get a, a dowsing reading and see how that relates. And over time, over re repeated testing, repeated feeling, then I can actually form a relationship with this. All art forms, all sciences need to be worked over time and they unfold. And so I think that that's one of the great things about it. I think the pitfall is when people um, not take physical action. So then they start to overly depend on their pendulum. It's like, mm. I don't know why I'm weak. I'm doing my pendulum and energy work all the time. I'm doing it on the couch all day long. I never move at all. You know, <laughs> so it's like, well, now you're over relying on that. <laughs> and so again, the principle of proportional representation. If you have a vital... Um, uh, hungry mind that keeps looking into the fields of study that you are wanting to douse about and then you douse wow I find that combination is when the magic really sustains itself yeah mm. mm -hmm. so again I, I we haven't quite started um, and we're coming probably to the end of the show um, <laughs> Well, I'm super excited. We could even do a false start. And for everyone that's watching the long form, they can just laugh along with us. We can have a start. Uh, yeah, we can do our intro. I don't know there, there must be a song that, that uh, we should be playing for it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I guess for the inside scoop to me, it is just a conversation between you and I. And I think what we're bringing up is quite relevant. And uh, it is a, a different perspective. I mean, to kind of, I, you know, to, I don't know how far we can go if we're always just pointing to the negative things that are occurring mm -hmm. and not taking into account, you know, our own inner, inner lessons or sort of the work that we're doing ourselves. Um, I think that we, um, we can sorry so um go over to you yogi <laughs> <laughs> i um we are naturally starting to talk about what we can do and what we are doing mm. uh, how we are trying to distinguish ourselves from the uh from the media um conversation that is going on why because it is so disappointing deep down inside we know what the media is saying we are waiting for a vaccine and everyone has to be in a feeling of terror until that comes because until that comes there's no guarantee that we are going to be able to return to any type of normal is that what's because i i haven't been tracking in the like i i've been sort of in my bliss and ecstasy zone <laughs> having right you know, the time of my life as everything falls apart all my stuff is, is coming together 
That so, is so many people. There was a great meme about, uh, you know, uh, when the shit hits the fan, the conspiracy theorists are all like lying back going, yep, I'm comfortable here. I saw it coming for a long time. And then everyone else is like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. And so it's a, it is a funny, funny turn. It's, it, it's kind of ironic. Like you jumped in the ocean first thing in the morning, you got all your adrenaline out of the, your system and now you're just cruising for the rest of the day. <laughs> well, what is happening from what I am assessing is that uh, there's a big conversation going on about uh, herd immunity. We talked a lot about that, about if we're actually seeing a true burning out of the virus. Um, and there are several experts that are talking about that, uh, are saying, well, you know, this is burning out in several parts of the world, so we can actually um, be heartened that that is happening. And then, and then another group who is so happens to actually um, be looking for the vaccine for this is, um, is saying, you know, second wave is coming, third wave is coming, and we don't know. And so it's a race to find the virus. Uh, 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 solution, which is going to be a vaccine. So much so that we have, uh, it's, called, it's called Moderna, which is a big vax company. And they released, they put a huge press briefing out saying, we are feel like we're getting super close here. But then you have Robert F. Kennedy and even, um, it, it's called um, Stats News, which is like a very much a medical uh, news reporting group saying, you provided no numbers here. You have nothing to really base this, this, da, 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 ha, you know, the trumpets are out and blaring. And so it's just a sign, and this is just within this week, that we're so hungry and we're rushing so quickly to this that we're throwing up these possibilities way premature. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really important thing. Um, the other thing is, is that, the, um, that even Fauci, who is very quick to come out from the CDC about these things, didn't say a word. And so we know that 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 really is a hyperbole. It's a really like, you know, oh, it's an overblown thing. Some things that I'm looking at is, okay, vaccine companies, their morality, their safety. And as Robert F. Kennedy, who you all uh, probably know, um, he is a big Democrat, of course, uh, down in the, the States saying, I'm not anti-vax, but I am safe vaccine. And so some, so some of the things that I heard him talking about were that the, um, you know, basically you cannot sue a vaccine company. They really have uh, made it that, that because this is for, you know, this is an essential service and it's hooked in with the CDC, which is, uh, you know, was a military-based group where um, because they wanted the ability to rush vaccines out very quickly, they also didn't have to do safety trials. They, they are the only medicine that doesn't have to be, you know, pushed through a five-year safety trial. And so that's another thing is that where are the long-term safety studies on a lot of these, uh, these vaccines that are coming out? No, I think, I think we have 72 vaccines, is it, on the bill, uh, you know, that are kind of in regular use, but they have like over 200 that are in the pipeline just uh, coming down. And so that's another thing is that we're like with satellites and the 5G, we're talking about increasing the technology, whatever technology these people are involved in, the powers that want more control within our life, all of their offerings are exploding right now. 
And so we know that their reach is really increasing. So if we're talking about 5G, if we're talking about the satellites, you know, we, we have a certain number of satellites. Well, they are increasing, you know, a lot. And yeah. then we're, we're seeing the same thing with vaccines. But the last thing I'll say is um, that, uh, you know, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, 75% of their budget comes from the industry. 75% of the FDA's budget comes from the pharmaceutical industry. So what we're talking about is people paying for themselves to be regulated. And how does that work? This is a conflict of interest. So at the very core of the FDA, at the very core of the CDC, is a conflict of interest where these people are, are of, yeah. And so I think it's almost even best just to leave it in that broad term and let people try to, try to deal with that. Uh, that conflict of interest and see if they themselves can reconcile it and do they intuitively feel like that is actually a reconcilable circumstance or should we be looking at what can we personally be doing as individuals and what the government should be encouraging which is self re self resiliency to take the weight off a system that is so corrupt and is drowning in its own weight so that so that's been some of my things. The last thing I will say, though, Glycosmith Klein, which is a huge, uh, it's like the biggest uh, far, far, pharma vax company. Uh, they are partnered with Google and Facebook. They have a six hundred sixty-five million dollar contract with Google and Facebook around the promotion of vaccines. Six hundred and sixty-five million. So, so what is? So we're looking at all of these videos going up and being taken down. And so now we see this. We see that well, actually, there is money, as you said before. Just follow the money. What you know, if you want to look at the players, you have to look at where is the money going. And so we have this where Google and Facebook are making direct money and it's being put out there as public safety, but, but also they are taking money and they're making huge amounts of money. So, yeah. yeah so just some, some things that I've been thinking about and it's really brought me back in, into my lane, which is personal resiliency, which mm -hmm. is, empowering people to do everything that they can to be bulletproof inside you know mm. yeah i mean just thinking about everything that we're talking about but at the end coming in with the big gun of just that stat right like i mean you're always bringing in very pertinent data to me you're 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 you're, you're finding the gold and so you, you are doing the inside scoop. I mean, I think you might be the scoop of the inside. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm hanging out in my Sultan's tent. I think, I think you're the ice cream. Ah. If, I, if I'm the scoop, you're the ice cream, right? Ah, that's so mm. nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the collared shirt. That's why I have to bring out the stats. I know. So, so one of us has to say something that's logical to some degree but i mean how how can you argue with that like how like like some of these things are so obvious and so in a sense insidious and yet and then you have all the, the squawking and talking around it but when you go into the core of it you go this is what is occurring and you know, it's still like, I, I think there's this widening gap again between the people that are buying the government narrative and then everybody else. And these guys are like getting smaller and smaller. And these guys are getting bigger and bigger because there's a lot of people like us that are all saying just like, that is full of shit. Full it, of shit. And, and so I think when something's audacious in real time, 
and that's what you get a lot of people going, okay, I don't see what you're saying here. And you can only sound an alarm bell for so long before someone goes, God, that's annoying. But I will go back in the house and check if there's a fire. Yeah. Because at first, I heard the alarm and I ran out of the house. Or in this case, I heard the alarm and so I ran into the house. <laughs> but, that, but that alarm bell, can, 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 it can keep going. But eventually you're like, hmm, I think I'll go outside and actually see if there's any world left. Yeah. And so I think that we're past that phase, which I'm super happy about. Yeah. And now we also do have time where people are in quarantine and going, you know what? I think I could spend two hours a day looking into this. And, it, and I'll leave with, the, with this idea that Ralph Nader said. And Ralph Nader was the guy behind seatbelts. He was the guy that fought the automobile industry and their propaganda, they, them saying, if you insist that we put seatbelts in our cars, we will all collapse. The automobile industry will collapse. Uh. So he said, that's bullshit. Get seatbelts in there. You're killing all these people. Da, 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 da. Well, he said that if someone spent as much time as they do with their... Um, with bird watching, for example, whatever hobby you have, if you spend the, the same amount of time as you did with your hobby, empowering yourself and acting in a way, in a revolutionary way, we could all man, you know, man this uh, revolution. And all it takes is that. It just mm. takes one or two hours a day of focused work, mm. a focused effort, and then we can actually make that change. So it's not impossible. You, you don't have to quit your job. Mm. You just merely have to be dedicating the same amount of time as you would with any of your hobbies. Well, I guess in ending that, I would say to anyone watching this, and if Mr. Yogi Shambhu puts this on his page and anyone sees this, uh, why not give him five hours a week for Plantier Guardians? And uh, if you're interested in building something, a whole new paradigm, Give it a shot and uh, join us because uh, we're, we're pointing to a future where we design what we want and uh, to be in balance, you know, with mother earth and to be in harmony with all the species. And so this is Elijah Ignatieff and Mr. Yogi Shambhu saying goodbye for this week. Have a great week. And thank you very much for uh, listening so far. You're, you're one of our dearest allies if you did yes thank you so much we'll see you next week